This afternoon, the National Assembly will hold a mini plenary discussion to discuss the Economic Freedom Fighters, a private member's bill to have the seat of a parliament move to Cape Town, move from Cape Town rather to Pretoria. When the EFF tabled the motion in November last year, they contended that it would, would save the fiscus about 7 billion rand in reduced travel and accommodation spend by parliamentarians. In our tambo is a member of the National Assembly and also the national spokesperson of the EFF, and he now joins us via Zoom. Sinao, so good morning and thank you so much for making time for us. What exactly is it that the EFF is uh, trying to cure with this bill? Look, uh, two things, Aldrin. Firstly, politically, we're trying to reverse the colonial pact that has resulted in the administrative capital of South Africa and the legislative capital of South Africa being in two different places. And this happens because the Africana colonialists and the British colonialists made an agreement that they are going to separate those powers amongst themselves where they control specific territories. So the location of the legislative capital of South Africa in the city of Cape Town is not a result of anything of convenience. It's a deliberate political logic. And for that reason, we want that to be changed. But secondly, the financial implications of having the Parliament of South Africa and the city of Cape Town are enormous. Uh, for a large part of the time, members of Parliament spend their time traveling to the farthest corner of South Africa to conduct business of, of government. It's inaccessible to our people because it's the furthest province away from our people. So we have to pay for the lodging of members of Parliament, we have to pay for the flying of members of Parliament, the accommodation of ministers and the sustenance of that building there. So it's, not, it's no longer logical for it to be located in the city of Cape Town. And uh, those are one of the two things that we seek to remedy as the economic freedom fighters. Yeah. And when it comes to um, some of the people who are against this, including the Democratic Alliance, one of the points that have been raised is it will have an impact on the tourism sector in, um, in, in, in Cape Town and also that there could be job losses of up to 3,000. Um, what's the EFF response to this? Because after all, this is also about uh, the economic implications of such a decision. I think the economic implications of the continued spend of members of parliament going there far outweigh the projections of the Democratic Alliance around tourism uh, with regards to the parliament of South Africa. I think it's quite selfish by the Democratic Alliance and I don't think it's something that's rooted on any merit to want to keep the infrastructure of parliament in Cape Town for the sake of tourism rather than to move it to the city of Tswane, which will be more central for most South Africans in order to be able for them to access those that they've elected to govern, and will be more central in terms of the work of those who've been elected to govern to do their work instead of spending a majority of their time flying to and fro from Cape Town from all corners of South Africa. So I think it's short-sighted. I don't think it's vested in any merit. I think rather it's just an entitlement by the DA to want to keep Parliament where they think they will govern in perpetuity. And uh, with regards to those uh, jobs that are currently in place in the city of Cape Town, there must be measures that are undertaken, of course, to see how far we can retain those jobs, how far we can see how many workers can be relocated as part and parcel of the infrastructure of parliament in itself, because there is expertise and experience we would not want to lose. But we mustn't also dampen away the fact that of the job opportunities that may arise from the relocation of parliament as well. So there's a there's a balancing of uh, forces that will need to happen. But I don't think there's any merit from the arguments from those who want to keep parliament uh, in the city of Cape Town other than short-sightedness and a sense of entitlement. When you look at the feasibility study that was commissioned by Parliament and also um, one of the meetings that took place by the Joint Standing Committee on Financial Management, does it bolster your argument that it is the right decision to actually move Parliament um, to Pretoria? Look, in our understanding, in the long and medium term, we would save seven billion if we were to relocate the Parliament of South Africa to the city of Tswane, and if it were to be retained there, including the refurbishment and renovation costs pre and post the fire that happened in Parliament, about 17 billion will be spent you know, on retaining Parliament there. So as it, it is undoubtedly feasible not only to relocate the Parliament of South Africa to Tswane, because there is existing infrastructure in the city of Tswane that will simply need to be improved. And uh, above, over and above that, will save a lot of money. I mean, the traveling that is done by members of parliament, the allocations of flights to them, their partners, their dependents, the maintenance of parliamentary villages, the maintenance of the homes of ministers in the city of Cape Town, these are costs that are not necessary if we could centralize the location of parliament. So we're bolstered in all facets in terms of how we're going to proceed.
Do you know uh, the relocation of Bali. Do you know how many MPs currently live in Gauteng and whether or not the amendment to the Electoral Act would change those dynamics as well? Because then you'd have a constituency-based um, um, MPs who are, who are elected via constituency base. Do you think uh, at all that it makes it a bit difficult if you only focus on the number of MPs who currently live in Gauteng who would have to travel from Gauteng to Cape Town? Look, I think a substantial number, we can't confirm at this stage how many MPs exactly live in the city of Gauteng, but a substantial number of MPs do, considering that a majority of voters also stem from Gauteng and most political parties deploy on, on that constituency or representative basis. But it's not only from the travel from Gauteng to the city of Cape Town, but Cape Town is the furthest point from a majority of provinces in South Africa. It's the furthest from a majority of the, of the eight other provinces in South Africa in terms of accessing it. To go there is a minimum of two hours, whatever corner of South Africa you're coming from uh, in majority. So that that cost is, uh, is extremely yeah. substantial. You, members of parliament spend a lot of time in the air. We have to house them, we have to accommodate them. And it's something that's no longer sustainable, but politically, the establishment of these two entities of the administrative and legislative capitals being in two separate provinces is wrong, is unsustainable, and is something that we must reverse as a post-democratic South Africa. Section 46 of the Constitution says that Parliament is in Cape Town. Does that mean that we require an amendment of the Constitution at all? Look, we'll explore that, but the bill doesn't necessarily trump uh, any constitutional amendments, but if necessary for us to bolster the bill of the AFF in terms of the relocation of parliament, if there's a necessity for any constitutional amendments, we will explore that. But we're interested today, particularly in the National Assembly, to hear the reasoning of other political parties as to why they would want to keep the Parliament of South Africa in Cape Town outside of uh, some sin sinister desire for vacation purposes. There's no political yep. or financial logic retaining Parliament in Cape Town in our understanding. In 2016, the then uh, president of the ANC in the country, Jacob Zuma, also mooted this idea of moving parliament from Pretoria. Um, it, last year, the transport minister, was then just the transport minister, Figi Lambalula, also said um, it, it makes sense to move parliament to, to Pretoria. Have you had discussions with the ANC on whether or not they would be supporting uh, this bill? There's been no discussions at this stage. But uh, we are pleased that the logic that we introduced, and it's part and parcel of the founding manifesto of the EFF, by the way, which was adopted in 2013, that this colonial pact of this sort of nature of organizing of our governance structures and society must be reversed. So their uh, agreement with uh, what we have adopted since our founding as the Economic Freedom Fighters shows that uh, it's a logic that has gone over their heads up until the EFF had spoken about it. So we haven't had any engagements with them. We're interested to hear what the contributions of the African National Congress will be to the debate today. But it is uh, comforting to know that some senior leaders of the African National Congress have ceded to the logic that we have proposed. Thank you so much for your time. So now Tambo there, who is a member of the National Assembly and of course also a member of um, the EFF, a spokesperson there for the EFF as well, looking into this question and the debate that we're taking place a bit later on today, and that is whether or not Parliament should be moved to um, the Pretoria.